In this video I will be making 4NN trimethylanilene from toluene, which is a polymerization catalyst for different types of polymers, specifically cyanoacrylates, which is what superglue is made of. Normally superglue already sets quite quickly, but sometimes a more instant stickiness is required. To do this there are commercial variants of superglue activators for sale, and in this video I will be making the activator myself and producing my own superglue activator spray. The synthesis from toluene will require multiple steps. First will be the nitration of toluene in the para position, then the reduction of this nitro group to an amine, and then the dimethylation of the amine to produce the final superglue activator. So to start off I need to do a mononitration of toluene in the para position. To do this I will need 96% sulfuric acid and 65% nitric acid. So I set up a stir plate with an ice bath. For this reaction it is important to keep the temperature below 10 C, because above this temperature the toluene will nitrate in multiple positions. So I set up a thermometer adapter and then add in 160 ml of toluene. Then I add a dropping funnel on top and drop in a stir bar. Now to the dropping funnel, I add a mixture of 150 ml of 65% nitric acid and 190 ml of 96% sulfuric acid. When the toluene has cooled down, I can start slowly adding the acid mixture. For this reaction it is very important that it is stirring strongly, because the acid and the toluene are immiscible. If there is not enough stirring, the reaction will not work. So I slowly add in the acid mixture and also make sure that the temperature doesn't increase too much. During the reaction, the mixture turns red, and when it is finished, it will turn yellow. So I remove the flask, and we can see that instantly two layers start to separate. Here the bottom layer is the acid and the water, and on top of that is a mixture of mononitrated toluene isomers. Because toluene has a methyl group, the distribution of these isomers is heavily favored towards ortho and para isomers, because methyl groups are ortho para directors. That doesn't mean that no meta isomers are present, but it is less than 5%, which is not very significant. So I move the mixture to a separatory funnel and allow the layers to separate again. I then drain off the lower acid layer and discard it. Then I wash the remaining organic layer with some saturated sodium bicarbonate solution to destroy any remaining acid. It is probably better to wash it with water beforehand to remove the bulk of the acid and then wash with the saturated sodium bicarbonate solution to react with anything that is remaining. As you can see a lot of pressure is building up in the funnel, therefore it is a lot wiser to do a water washing beforehand. Anyhow I do the same with the saturated sodium chloride solution and let the layers separate again. Then I collect the washed organic layer and dump in a bunch of calcium chloride to dry it. I just let it sit for a while and then filter it with vacuum filtration. After everything has filtered through, the liquid has become clear and we can start the crystallization process. So I pour all of it into a crystallizing dish. All of the isomers have different melting points, which makes it easier to separate them. Right now the para isomer is a solid and the meta and ortho isomers are liquids. So the para isomer here is actually dissolved in the other isomers so we don't see any solid here. So to separate them is not super difficult. Since the meta isomer is only like 2% we can kind of ignore it. But the ortho isomer has a freezing point of about minus 10 C and is the largest fraction of the isomers. So I can simply put it in the freezer next to my mom's juices which runs at minus 26 C. So after a while everything has frozen. But since I took it out, the ortho isomer is quickly becoming liquid again. So I quickly move it to a filter and vacuum filter all the liquid through. At room temperature, both the meta and ortho isomers are liquid, but they also dissolve the para isomer, which we want to isolate. But if we completely solidify the mixture and then quickly move all of the solids to a vacuum filter, the meta and ortho isomers will become liquid again. Besides them being cold and having lower solubility, they now don't have time to dissolve all of the para isomer before they are pulled through the filter. So part of the para isomer will be left behind as a solid above the filter. Since it has to be done very quickly and they still dissolve some of the para isomer, I repeat this process a few times to get out as much of the para isomer as possible. So after doing that a few times, I poured out the filtered liquid into a bottle which is mostly the ortho isomer and a bit of the meta isomer. 
Then I took all the para isomer that I collected and put it back on the filter and gave it a wash with some water, which will hopefully flush out some impurities. So I pull all the water through and then dump all the wash product onto a dish. So now I have a bunch of wet para nitrotoluene crystals. So to dry the crystals and remove the remaining water, I will put it in a desiccator and let it dry till I'm ready to continue with the next step. So I come back a few days later and it looks basically the same. Now the next step is to reduce the nitro group to an amine. To do this I will use tin 2 chloride as a reducing agent, which will be produced during the reaction. So I set up a flask with a stir bar and I put in the tin metal and added all of my para nitrotoluene on top. I then add a condenser on top and start stirring. Then I gradually add in 30% HCl through the condenser. This will convert the tin metal to tin 2 chloride. And together with the excess acid, this will reduce the nitro group to an amine. After the first reaction, the HCl salt of the product is formed, which can be freebased by adding a sodium hydroxide solution as the next step. When all of the HCl is added, I heat the mixture and leave it to reflux overnight. When I come back the next morning, it has become cloudy and some white bits are floating around. We now have the HCl salt of the product, which is supposed to be soluble in water, but the solution is probably saturated so some of it has precipitated out. This is not a problem since it will be free based here anyway. To convert the product from its salt form into the free base, I can simply add a strong solution of sodium hydroxide. When I do that, a lot of heat is generated and HCl and water vapors get spewed out of the condenser. Most of what was floating around is gone, so the solution has cleared up. We can also see a lot of solids somehow latched onto the stir bar. Since the flask is quite full, I moved it to a larger one but it was a little bit messy since the stir bar didn't fit through the neck anymore. Anyhow, I keep adding the sodium hydroxide solution until nothing more is happening. After a while, the solution turns more cloudy again because of the product now being insoluble and partly from insoluble tin compounds. I leave it to settle and we can see a layer forming on top, which should be our product. So I move it all to a separatory funnel and simply collect the top layer. While it was in the separatory funnel, it was all still hot which means that my solid product was a liquid, which also makes it easy to separate. But after a while, it had cooled down to room temperature, but it didn't all solidify. This tells me that the product isn't very pure, and we are likely seeing the same problem as before. The isomer of the product, which are all liquids at room temperature, are dissolving the para-isomer. So now we also know that the para nitrotoluene likely contained a lot of the other isomers. So to fix this issue, I repeat the same process as before. I freeze all of the liquid and then do a vacuum filtration. I push out a lot of the liquid and in the end I am left with white yellowish crumbles. This process can be redone like before but I'll just continue with the product I have here. And I also put the rest of the liquid into a vial. So now the final step is the dimethylation of the amine. This will be on a smaller scale so I set up a tiny 3 neck flask and add a small condenser and a stopper. I drop in a very small stir bar and then add 2.2 ml of 85% formic acid. While it is stirring, I add in all of the product, which is 1.3 grams. When all of it has dissolved, I add about 3 ml of 37% formaldehyde to the solution. After that, I leave it to reflux overnight. So what will happen during the reaction is called an Eschweiler-Clark methylation. By using excess formaldehyde and formic acid, a primary or secondary amine can be methylated. The first methylation of the amine begins with the imine formation with formaldehyde. The formic acid acts as a source of hydride and reduces the imine to a secondary amine. The driving force is the formation of CO2 gas, which will bubble out of the solution. The formation of the tertiary amine is similar, but it is slower because it's more difficult to form the iminium ion. When I come back the next day, the solution has changed from red to orange. Now I slowly add some 10% HCl solution to change the amine into its HCl salt. After adding a bunch, the solution turns cloudy. So now that the amine is very likely turned into its salt, I can start boiling off the water, formic acid and the formaldehyde. So I set it up for distillation and simply boil over everything until no more comes over. After heating the solution, it turns back to red. And when pretty much no more liquid comes over, I add in water to dissolve the salt back into the solution. I pour the contents into a beaker and wash the flask with some more water. Now the next step is to turn the HCl salt back into its free base form. 
So I add in a bunch of 18 molar sodium hydroxide solution to the flask to wash it, and then pour all of it into a beaker. Instantly the mixture turns cloudy, because the free base is not so soluble in water. So to separate them, I move it to a separatory funnel. Since it looks like it formed an emulsion, it is not possible to separate them normally, so I have to do a liquid extraction. So to take out all of the amine, I add a bunch of DCM to the mixture and shake it around. I then let the layer separate and we can see that the colored product has now moved into the bottom DCM layer. So I drain away the bottom DCM layer and discard the remaining water layer. Then I set up all of the DCM extract for distillation. I will simply boil off all of the DCM and then the product should be left behind in the flask. When everything has boiled off, I am left with a thick viscous red oil. So I transfer everything to a vial. And when it has cooled down, it has pretty much completely solidified. Literature tells me that the product is a colorless to brown oil. So I'm going to assume that it's at least in here. And it's just not very pure. But to test it, we can see if it works as a superglue activator. So I went online and bought some cyanoacrylate superglue and spray vials so I can test the activator. Superglue activator is quite a simple product. And it's basically just a 4NN trimethylaniline dissolved in acetone. So I simply put a bunch of acetone in the vial and shook it around until everything dissolved. After a few minutes of shaking, it had all dissolved and I can now transfer part of it to the spray vial. Since it doesn't have to be super concentrated, I transfer only a little bit and top it off with more acetone. So to test if the activator works, I will compare how fast two pieces of cardboard stick to each other. One with only superglue and one with superglue and the activator. So I start off with only superglue. I draw an S shape on the cardboard and then push them together and see how long it takes for them to properly stick. So it looks like it took a little under one minute before they were stuck together. Though it didn't stick at all the places. So now for the comparison, I do the exact same, but I spray some of the activator on it before I push them together. So we can see it was basically stuck almost instantly, and it seemed to stick over the whole cardboard. So this was basically the confirmation. I successfully made a super glue activator spray. Originally I also wanted to make my own super glue for this video but it required more equipment and more time to complete. So I will likely put that in another video. Anyhow, thanks for watching. See ya.